Okay, so we are interested in finding the variance of the hypergeometric distribution. Uh, I have done several videos on this, and I will put the link for you down above the comments in the detailed descriptions. On if you're interested in more elaborate treatment of the hypergeometric distribution, how we come up with the parameter space, uh, and uh, also. Uh, very elaborate treatment of uh, just the distribution as well as a key relationship that I'm going to be using in deriving the variance in this video. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to uh, watch those videos if you're interested on how I'm actually deriving these uh, detailed work that I'm about to do. All right, so let's begin by definition of the variance of a random variable x. It is well known that the variance of random variable x is equal to expectation of x squared minus expected value of random variable x quantity squared. Okay, so how we're going to go about this is as following. We're going to actually write expected value of x squared as expected value of x times x minus 1 and uh, we're going to add expected value of x because without it then we don't have the original expression and then of course minus the last part the mean or expected value of random variable x squared okay so this is actually what I'm going to use this equation this expression if you will to come up with the final the description of the variance for the hypergeometric distribution. So I will come back to this almost near the end. But for now, in order to do this, um, let's find the expected value of, of x times x minus 1 for the hypergeometric distribution. So by definition of expectation, I can write expected value of x times x minus 1 as in the sum from let's say x0 to n because that's what the domain of variable x is x here by the way is the number of successes um, when we uh, draw a sample of size little n from population capital n without replacement okay k here is the number of successes in the population actually and of course cap n is the population size so by definition of expectation this is going to be x times x minus 1 times probability mass function and the probability mass function is k choose x n minus k choose little n minus x over all possible samples of little n from population n that are selected again without replacement so what are we going to do next here? Next, this is going to equal to, I'm going to bring out in the denominator, cap n choose little n, that's the constant. So we can move it outside of the summation. And this is x0 to n. And uh, in the numerator, we can write the numerator as multiplying x times x minus 1. Now k choose x, that would be k factorial over x factorial, which I'm going to write as x, x minus 1, times x minus 2 factorial, that's my x factorial, and then k minus x factorial. Okay, that's what that is. <clears throat> Time the latter combination and choose n minus k choose little n minus x okay now having done this i can actually cross out the common factors here true and since we crossed out uh, x x minus one um, we need to adjust the index of our uh, summation here one over n choose n the lower limit of summation is going to be x from two now to cap n and then k factorial, I can write it as k, k minus 1, times k minus 2 factorial, divided by x minus 2 factorial. And in the bracket, I can write this as k minus 2 
minus x minus 2 factorial to kind of make it look like uh, a combination of its own here. So that's going to be n minus k, choose a little n minus x. All right. Now, <clears throat> next in the numerator, kk minus 1, I can bring that outside because the index of summation does not depend on k, rather on x. So it acts as a constant, so you can move the, move the constant in front of a summation. And uh, what's going to happen next? Uh, it's going to be x equal 2 to n, the limits of summation. And this expression now, this expression can be written as k minus 2 choose x minus 2 okay by definition of combinations and n minus k choose a little n minus x all right now here if we let if we let y be x minus 2 then x is y plus 2 okay now when x is n okay when x is a little n then uh, replace x with n so that means n is y plus 2 so that means y is n minus 2 and this is going to help me actually with the upper limit of summation okay now the other important notation here and this is the key relationship that really enables me to go to the next step and I've again put a link to my video where I actually derive this relationship the key relationship here is this that the sum from j0 to m of a choose j times b choose m minus j this sum is equal to a plus b choose m and again i have i have shown this in my uh, other videos which you will have access to through the link i will provide you so in here now matching what we have here to what's in here matching these two so i'm going to show you like what is a what's b what is j and what m minus j would be okay so in here well acting as a is our k minus 2 okay acting as little b is n minus k okay we have that now if you add these two we get a plus b okay so a plus b let me write it in front here a plus b is going to be simply n minus 2 right when you add the right side it's going to be n minus 2 all right and so we have that and m what is m m is going to be the upper limit which is n minus 2 okay and y is right in here because of that okay and then <clears throat> based on this relationship i can now rewrite from here on it's going to be easy so it's k times k minus 1 choose cap and little n and then the sum uh, from y0 to n minus 2, which it basically is a shift in the index, right? Uh, down 2. And uh, that's going to be k minus 2. x minus 2 is our new variable y. And then I have n minus k. Little n minus x becomes little n minus y minus 2. Okay, based on this relationship perfect and then um, i can write now the numerator is kk minus one denominator cap n choose little n and the whole sigma now using this what we just mentioned right in here rewriting it we get cap n minus two choose little n minus two and there we have it so we were able to write the sigma as a combination therefore expected value of x times x minus 1 is going to be <clears throat> now I'm gonna just play with that expression okay 
Okay, so this expectation working in the factorials is going to be uh, k times k minus 1. The denominator is cap n choose little n, so once you rewrite it in factorial notation, uh, invert and multiply, we get n little n factorial cap n minus little n factorial divided by n factorial. And then the latter part, the second part, this part, using factorial notation is going to be uh, little n minus 2 factorial in the denominator times cap n minus 2 minus little n minus 2 bracket factorial and the numerator is n minus 2 factorial and we're going to work these out we'll work these out next uh, please note that in this bracket the twos cancel out so this is just cap n minus little n factorial okay now once we have it as such then we can cross out that factor with this factor true and so those uh, cancel out and then we can write the rest of it as product of k times k minus 1 the n factorial little n factorial I'm gonna write it as n n minus 1 n minus 2 uh, factorial because we have that n minus 2 factorial in the denominator okay divided by uh, the capital n factorial you see here i'm going to try to bring it down to n minus 2 factorial so that one we can write it as uh, capital n times n minus 1 times cap n minus 2 factorial n minus 2 factorial little n minus 2 that's this one okay and of course uh, can't lose sight of cap n minus 2 factorial from the numerator of the second fraction and now uh, as we anticipate we're going to cross out the oops, uh, common factors these and then uh, we're going to cross out these two okay which reduces the expression a great deal and now we can write this as simply k times k minus 1 n n minus 1 divided by cap n n minus 1 okay so that's uh, simply the expected value of x times x minus 1 now I can actually remember up here in the beginning I had this uh, this expression right here so that's where I'm going to go next and uh, substitute for those expectations all right so doing so I'm going to write variance of x by expected values minus plus expected value of minus by Square. And so I should mention that again I have shown in another video the description for you on how expect to vary the hypergeometric ends up to be k little n over n all right so we're good to go therefore the variance is going to be we just showed the first one is k capital n minus expectation another one, that's seen you know, of hypergeometric k little n over cap n and then minus same expression when you square that you're going to get square of each of those terms or factors that you had for expected value of x namely k squared n squared little n squared over cap n squared okay so what is next next we're going to actually write the numerator k k minus 1 and then n times n minus 1 i'm, I'm combining fractions okay let me put down the lcd the lowest common denominator here is going to be n squared n minus one okay so i'm building the first fractions numerator to the lcd i need an n to build it plus the middle fraction has k little n so it has n from the lcd it needs another cap n times n minus one uh, and then the second or I'm sorry the very last uh, fractions numerator is k squared n squared its denominator 
has n squared as you can see here it needs another factor of cap n minus 1 in order to become the LCD okay and there you go I have all of that divided by the LCD of n squared times n minus 1 perfect now we're just doing algebraic manipulation really there's not much to this so what I'm gonna do next I'm gonna remove the common factor <clears throat> the common factor is going to be uh, cap capital K little n okay so let me show you that that's cap K little n uh, here and of course we have two factors capital K tutors of little n here so I'm simply gonna factor K n out okay and once we remove these factors all that remains are uh, k minus 1 times little n minus 1 times capital n plus uh, cap n n minus right and then uh, one factor of cap k little n capital n minus 1. all of that divided by n squared times n minus 1 okay now what are we going to do next well uh looks like next we're going to foil uh the two parentheses the two binomials here and uh, multiply it by capital n and removing the color i have cap k little n so foiling it and times capital n we're going to get capital k little n cap n minus capital k capital n negative little n cap n plus n okay and then distribute uh right here distribute capital n to the binomial we get n squared minus n and finally distribute in here cap k little n to that binomial we get capital k little n cap k plus cap k little n all of that divided by n squared n minus one again this is simple uh, algebra now there's not much to this and there's actually some common um, not common but some terms we can combine like terms there are some terms that are opposites so for instance uh, the cap k and little n negative cap k little n cap a n are opposites capital N capital N those are opposites so those cross out right they add to zero so what I have now is K N little n times remaining is n squared minus cap n little n minus cap K little n right oh which um, uh, I'm sorry this one let me see yeah I missed that one is cap K capital N yeah that was this one right good otherwise those are sold and now true perfect so we're almost there folks and then in the denominator we have n squared s all right now we can write this as uh, in the numerator bring little n this n in front of a main fraction line and then write capital K over N okay remember in nature there are two factors of N so I'm using one factor of N here and K here to write it as K over N okay times now we have four terms within parentheses we can actually factor this so to factor this I'm going to from the first two terms I'm going to factor capital N and uh, minus from the last two terms I'm going to factor capital K and shrink this a little and then it's just going to have cap n minus little n divided by uh, the remaining factors in the denominator okay and uh, next step is our final step so this is going to equal to n times cap k uh, capital n times and finally we can write the factored form here uh, we can factor the binomial cap n minus little n out doing so will give us the factored form right at by the n 
Okay, and there you have it. So this is the form of the variance. Uh, and uh, we can now box it in. And that's X. Uh, there you have it. And uh, hopefully we're able to follow this again. I have um, a more elaborate detail uh, video. I'll put all the links to these other videos for you that you can actually watch if you're interested in uh, in more details about the hypergeometric distribution. Okay, and with that, uh, we are done with this video. Thank you for watching.